I don't think the Son of God was prone to exaggeration. He said to his disciples, I am so sad. I'm this close to dying of grief. Now, you know it happens. You've heard of a spouse dying, and then a couple weeks later, the other spouse dies. It happens. People die of grief. Here's Jesus, this close to the cross, this close to bearing the sin of everybody in the world. He knows what Jerusalem has rejected him. His heart is broken over where he's going. His heart is broken over what his people are doing. He's just despondent, and he's this close to dying. He said, wait here. Stay awake with me. And he goes a little farther, and he fell on his face. That's just how weakened of spirit he was. He just fell down on his face and started to pray. And he said, listen to this. Oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Jesus was on his way to the cross, and he said, God, if at all possible, let's bypass this part. <laughs> Remember, you know the verse, with God all things are possible. Apparently, this is the way to redeem humanity. There is no other way. Jesus said, God, if at all possible, let's not do this. And then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. That's what Jesus said. Like the job, like the sickness. He said, this isn't my choice, number one, God. But if it's your choice, number one, God, then it's my choice, number one. That's pretty much what his prayer was. And if you always pray that way, your prayers will always be answered. You'll either get what you want or you'll get what God wants, which is what you want. It's a win-win when we pray in accordance to God's will. When he went back to his disciples, he found them asleep. So he said to Peter, so you men couldn't stay awake with me just for a while, for an hour, could you? All of you must stay awake and pray that you won't come into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. It's just sad. He gave his life to these men. And on the day that he needed them the most, they couldn't even stay awake and watch with him for a little while. Just added to his grief. He went away, talked to the one who never let him down. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot go away unless I drink it, let your will be done. Again he came back and found them asleep, for their eyes were very heavy. And he left them again and went and prayed again for the third time, saying the same thing. Was he persistent? Three times, just in the garden. If at all possible, God, let's bypass this part. Was he righteous? Of course, this is the Son of God, the only righteous human who's ever lived. And he was praying according to God's will. And he ended up being crucified and bearing the sin of the world. Did he want that to happen? Well, yes, he did. It wasn't prayer choice number one, though. It was prayer choice number two. It's hard to communicate how much better it is for God's will to be done than our own because we have a hard time trusting him. But I guess we can equate it to a toddler. And those of you who have raised children, the kids will get to an age where they're mobile, and they can start running. But they don't know where to run and when to run. A busy street's just an open playground. So you say, stop, don't run there. <laughs> they don't listen. They run. Yeah, catch me, catch me. Zoom, right for the open street. And you grab them. And they're having a grab. Oh, they chase me, they grab me. Let's do it again. And then you swat them. Bam! Because we're not going to do this again because you might not always be fast enough to catch them. So you want to teach them that there's a punishment for doing this. So they won't want to do it anymore. It's kind of like that. We're the kids heading for the open street. To us, it's a big game. We pray a prayer. It's obvious. This is fun. This is right. This is the prayer. This is the way it should be. And God says, no, no, this isn't the way it should be. Oh, sure it is. What do you know? He knows everything and he loves you. And if you don't get your prayer answered, there's a very good reason. You may not know it, but do you trust him or do you not trust him is what it comes down to. There's a song that came out a few years ago, and it's about how sometimes it's better off not to have our prayers answered. 
secular song by Garth Brooks. And rather than just saying, have you heard it? I'm going to play it for you because I think it makes a great theological point. I love it when the radio gives me good theology. When we want to have a powerful prayer life, we have to P, be persistent. We have to R, be righteous. We have to A, pray in accordance with God's will. The Y in prayer stands for the word yearning. Um, scripture warns us not to be covetous in our prayers. Not to pray for greedy, selfish things. For example, let's say you see a red Ferrari. And you really like Ferraris. To you, life would be no better than if you had a red Ferrari. And so you start praying for the red Ferrari. And lo and behold, two or three years pass and you still don't have a red Ferrari. Can't imagine why. Because listen to this passage of Scripture. James again, the disciple of the Lord. You want things. Now he's talking to humans and human nature in general. He says you want things, but you can't have them. So you're ready to kill. You strongly desire things, but you can't get them, so you quarrel and fight. You don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And when you ask, you don't receive it because your motives are bad. You ask for things to consume or to use for your own pleasures, to consume it upon your lusts, says another translation. Basically, we're asking for prayers to be answered when they're just for selfish reasons. And God's not much into helping us achieve our selfish ends. That doesn't mean you can't ask for things for yourself. That's not what it means. But there's a difference between, you know, God, it'd be great if I could get some way to work. I, I'd appreciate a car. That would be helpful. Please help me get a car. I can't afford one. And I've, I know all sorts of people who've prayed prayers like that. Next thing you know it, their cousin Myrtle's nephew's once removed is moving to Africa and he needs to get rid of his car and he just gives it to you. I've heard of this kind of thing. It happens all the time. It's never been a red Ferrari, though. <laughs> so just be careful how you pray. Persistence, P. R, righteousness. A, according to God's will. Y, beware the yearning. And E, in every situation give thanks. I get this from Philippians 4, 6-7. through Never worry about anything. But in every situation, let your petitions be made known to God in prayers and requests with thanksgiving. So in every situation, it says, with thanksgiving. And it makes sense. To keep asking God for things and not thank Him for what He's given us, that doesn't sound good. How many of you would want to keep giving somebody something and they aren't thankful for what you've already given them? We just don't like to do that. And it only makes sense to praise God and honor Him for the things He's given us. So that Paul tells us, hey, be thankful for what you already have before you start asking for more. And so what I do and what I've taught my family to do when we have our prayer time together, I don't ever start a prayer with saying, God, give me this, give me this, give me that. I pray like this, God, thank you. Thank you for my family. Thank you for the food we had today. Thank you for the house that we're in when it's so hot out, we've got air conditioning. Thank you for the... And I just go through things. Things that I'm truly thankful for. And then I get to the but it sure be great if. <laughs> Prayers. <laughs> P, persistence. R, righteousness. A, according to God's will. Y, yearning. E, in every situation with thanksgiving. And the final R in prayer, really believe. Have some real faith in God. Trust that He can and wants to answer your prayer. That He will answer your prayer. Mark 11, 22-25. Jesus again says, have faith in God. I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. 